Hey everyone, welcome back to the REST API in-depth series. In this video, we're going to look at put and patch requests when it comes to web APIs together. Uh, this is going to be a pretty fun one. Uh, I highly encourage you to uh, kind of know a bunch about uh, post requests because uh, this is kind of a natural extension to the idea of a post request where we created a resource on the server. When it comes to put and patch requests, we're actually going to be using something very similar. The main difference is rather replacing a resource, which is almost kind of like creating a new resource, very similar to post or uh, kind of patching up uh, or editing or updating a resource when it comes to patch. So I highly recommend you uh, kind of get a good handle on how a post request works when it comes to creating a new resource. Uh, and then maybe you can take a look at something like put and patch, where we're actually gonna be modifying and updating resources depending on what method we use. So let's take a look at kind of how we can use put and patch requests when it comes to APIs together. Okay, so to start, I just have an overview of how put and patch works. Um, so again, that these are two of the HTTP uh, methods, like the verbs when it comes to REST APIs. Uh, you can see uh, the most common ones over here on the right-hand side. We looked at get requests before, post requests, as I just mentioned. Um, now we're looking at put and patch, and we're going to uh, end with a delete as well in the upcoming videos. There are some other uh, types of requests, uh, but these are the most common ones when it comes to CRUD operations. Now, as I mentioned, a put and patch request really comes down to the idea of replacing or modifying an existing resource kind of respectively. So put is for replacing and patch is generally for modifying or updating. This is really where the U in CRUD, uh, so create, read, update, and delete comes in. We're doing the update operation uh, for a CRUD operation. Um, a put and patch request, again, as you'd expect, it does have a request body, very, very similar to a post request, because we need to let the server know exactly what kind of data it is that we are updating or replacing in the first place exactly the same as a get and post request as well. We are sending these requests to put and patch to a specific URL endpoint. In this case, one that actually has an ID as well, uh, because we need to actually modify a resource, uh, a specific resource on the server. So uh, let's take a look at kind of a visual for this. So this is a put. We'll start with put and then we'll move over to patch uh, shortly after. We'll look at some code as well and then move to patch. So for a put request, this is generally how it would work. I want you to imagine, unlike a post request, just imagine that we uh, have data already on our server. So uh, this means that we've already like, probably posted off uh, a request um, in, in the past sometime to create some resource. So in this case, you can imagine like a user uh, resource, a set of different users. So these already have their data in there. They already have their IDs. They already have all of that stuff. Okay. So imagine that we have a user on the server that looks like this in the orange here in the top left. It has an ID, uh, which is a number. It has a username, uh, an age, and a country. So when, when we do a put request, um, really what you should be thinking about in the back of your mind is I want to replace a specific resource. So in the context of this user idea, if that's the resource that we're working with, uh, the kind of language you might want to be thinking about is I need to, I know that there's a user that exists right now, and I want to completely replace that user with an updated version of that user. Okay, so uh, that what that looks like in uh, in practice is imagine that, for example, we have uh, a 1337 as the ID, meow as the username, a 20 as the age, and Canada as a country over here. We would, for example, imagine want to change uh, the country to, say, Germany, right? We would say a put request. But the, the, the main thing to keep in mind here is that we are entirely replacing this resource. So the way to think about it is kind of like, imagine if you just wipe it out completely and put something in its place, you would want that entire chunk of data there. You wouldn't just want the kind of the difference, which is actually what we're going to get to later, which is the patch. So what I mean by that is we wouldn't want to just say, hey, please change the country to Germany, because that would just replace the entire resource uh, with only this JSON that has a country property and nothing else. So we actually need to specify the entire resource. I'm going to say that one more time because it's really important when it comes to understanding the differences between put and patch operations. You really want to treat a put request very similar to how you would do a post request, which is almost like creating creating a brand new resource, in this case, a new user. But we also, uh, in this case, actually have the ID already on like a post request. So we know this resource exists and we're instructing the server, we're asking the server, 
please replace this set of data with this new set of data. And you can find that data by a specific ID, for example, like in this case with a number, and take that entire chunk of data out and replace it with this entire new chunk of data that I'm going to give you. Okay, so in this case, we are uh, only really changing the country field, uh, but we need to specify everything there because the ID also needs to be uh, taken a note of by the server. So it's going to look through all of our users and find the one with that ID, uh, take it all out and replace it with this chunk of data right here in this JSON. And it's going to reply to us down here, um, just like a post request with that updated uh, resource. So in this case, uh, it's no longer Canada as a country, it is now Germany, we've totally lost the fact that um, Canada was there. Uh, and now this user monkey, uh, who's 20 years old comes from Germany. And uh, that is now the kind of replaced, or you can also think of in this case as updated user, but the key again, I can't specify this enough. Um, the entire set of data needs to be sent over. So let's take a quick look at this before we look at the code. Um, this is an example of what that would look like when it comes to the endpoint and the request and the response. Um, we would make a put request, so this is one of the methods, uh, to a specific endpoint. In this case, you can imagine we have a user endpoint and we are targeting a specific ID. So this would be like user slash and then like a dynamic ID. In this case, this user ID is uh, 1337, which is a great number. Um, and we would specify the body to look like this, which we just saw in the previous slide. Uh, note again, the ID is here, unlike a post request, okay? Um, so that the server can actually use that to go find the existing resource to replace. Um, now it's gonna go find that. We're saying replace user 1337 with this new information that I'm giving you. And uh, at voila, at the very end, we get back um, kind of that updated uh, user with that new country information in there. Uh, even though the previous information was the same, uh, it could have been different uh, and it would have overwritten that data with that new data. In this case, it only overwrote Germany, uh, which used to be Canada. Okay, so I'll switch over to uh, VS Code and let's take a look at an example of how this works uh, in Dnote together. So in VS Code, I'm gonna create a new file. I'll just call this put.ts, uh, just so that we have a, uh, a TypeScript file here. I'm gonna do a command shift P, I'm gonna type Dino here and do Dino enable. So I have my workspace file there created, which is right here, the settings.json for VS Code with that extension. Um, and I'll just start coding away the actual handler. So I'll say async uh, function handler. This takes a request, which is of type request, uh, and we're gonna return a new response. Uh, for now, I'll just do a hard coded uh, response uh, with a 404 status, uh, just because um, in, in the worst case, if we don't kind of hit any of our routes, we should show a not found. Then I'll do dino.serve, and this is gonna serve up our handler right there. So I'll save that, I'll open up my terminal here on the right-hand side. Uh, I'll do uh, dino run dash dash watch um, dash dash, I, I, I do know I need a read, so I'll do allow read, and I know I need to write, so I'll do allow dash uh, write, and allow uh, dash net. So we have um, kind of four flags here. Watch for the reloading um, of uh, the script every time I make a save. Uh, allow read to read files, dash dash allow write to write to the files, dash dash allow net to allow um, networking, um, and then the actual file as well, in this case put.ts. And then that's gonna start my uh, server right here. I'll just copy that. And uh, we should have our server. I'll switch to Insomnia. Um, <laughs> I think I already have from uh, previous exercises here, uh, there as well, I'll just delete that. Uh, and I'll create a new request here, HTTP request, uh, and I'll paste in my URL there, uh, and I'll send a put request. Notice that we're gonna look at patch later, uh, and I'll send that off, and I should get back a 404, which is perfect. Okay, now we said, uh, if we go back to our slide, that we should make a route uh, to update a specific resource. So let's just make some uh, kind of mock data for a second so we can actually see how this would work um, and then actually make that route for us as well. So if I switch to VS Code here, I'll create a new file. I'll just call this users.json um, and I'll put in a array here. Uh, and in that array, I'll put uh, a, a, an object and I'll put in some information. So I'll say ID in quotes here. I'll put an ID of one um, and I'll say uh, name, for example, and then the name, uh, let's let's think of a, a name here. Let's just say like Martha, for example. Okay, so uh, Martha has an ID of one. I guess we can also give a, an age here just so we have some more data to work with. Um, and we can say, you know, Martha might be like 60, for example. Okay, uh, I'll add one more um, user in here as well. 
Uh, I'll just copy that over here and paste it. I'll say ID of two, uh, name, uh, let's say uh, David, uh, and age for David is uh, maybe, uh, maybe David is like 14. Okay, so we have two users in our file here. I'll just save that so it kind of uh, does the prettier uh, formatting for us. Um, and I'd like you to imagine that these were created already in our database through some kind of other process, like for example, a post request. So these are users already in our database, in this case, in our file, um, and we might want to update these or replace them. Okay, so that's kind of the goal of this put and patch request idea. So if I switch back to my put request uh, here, I'm going to uh, start coding this out. I'll actually close my terminal so you have a bit more space to actually see me code here. I'll say const URL is equal to a new URL. I'll uh, put in the request URL here, which is going to be um, the actual string for the URL that's being requested and turn it into a URL object. I'll say const, um, let's just say uh, replace uh, user route is equal to a new URL pattern. And this pattern is gonna have a path name of slash users. Uh, slash ID, just like that. Okay, I guess uh, you could think of uh, like, is this better to have plural, singular? I always kind of flip back and forth. I don't really know uh, the best way to go about this. Um, maybe singular makes more sense. I want to replace uh, a user with a specific ID. Um, that 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 probably is is fine because I, I wouldn't generally want to be updating an entire collection. So I'll do singular there, slash user, slash ID. So then I can do if. Uh, the replace user route testing against our URL matches. So if we are indeed uh, going to slash user slash ID and the re uh, request dot method is equal to put in this case, because we want to do a replacement, then here we want to replace, uh, replace the user uh, given to us. Okay. Um, so which user are we replacing? Well, we are going to be, unlike a post request, given the ID of the user we want to replace. We are not generating a new ID here. Uh, we're not really doing any of that. Now, there are kind of um, exceptional cases where you might use a put very similar to a post, but we're going to go with kind of the, the vanilla basic um, CRUD operations here, um, create, read, update, and delete, put and patch are gonna be for uh, replacing and updating respectively. So we're gonna stick to that uh, and be pretty strict about it just so that uh, we can wrap our mind around this whole idea of how these operations work in a REST API and the backend. So um, what we're gonna do is, uh, this is our user right here. So let's say, uh, let's say I wanna replace a uh, David. Okay, so I want to replace David with some new information. Maybe I want to change David's age, for example. Okay, so how would we do that? Right, that's really the point of a put and a patch request. Now, put request in this case is a little bit awkward uh, because we kind of would generally be replacing the entire user. So let's 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 do something different here for the put request. Maybe we'll replace both the name and the age for David. Okay, so the entire user ID of two is gonna be replaced with a new user, uh, for example. That's kind of how we can think about it. So I'm gonna copy this user here for, for David. I'm just gonna um, highlight the entire JSON object there and copy it. I'll switch to Insomnia. Um, I'm gonna to go to the body tab and I'm gonna make sure that this is selected as JSON here. So it makes just like JSON in that drop down for the body tab. I'm gonna paste in, uh, I'm gonna paste that in there and uh, hopefully it looks, looks better. There we go, so that sounds good. Now, uh, my URL needs to be updated here. So slash user, uh, and in this case, slash, and then the ID. In this case, the ID is two, okay? So uh, no notice that uh, we have a dynamic ID here, and that's gonna be the ID we're gonna be using to look up into our users.json and actually uh, finding that value and actually updating it or replacing it in this case. So um, we, let's say, I wanna change um, David uh, let's just say we want to change David to Alex and we want to change the, the age uh, from maybe 14 uh, to maybe like 27, for example. Okay, so we want to completely change user ID 2's information to some brand new information. Um, do you have to change everything for put requests? No. Uh, but uh, in the idea of it being a replacement, generally that might be something you do, otherwise a patch might make more sense. So um, in this case, we're totally wiping out all the data for um, uh, David, and we're gonna be replacing it with Alex here. Um, does this really make sense from a user perspective? Maybe not, but it does make sense for other types of resources, but we'll keep it simple with this set of information just so we can kind of remain within this context. 
Now, we're going to be sending this off from our client to our server, which is this step right here. Okay, we're making a put request. We are sending the information to the server. The server is going to update or replace that resource and going to respond to the 200 if it's done successfully once it's found that user with that ID and actually replaced it. So we should get back a response with that new information. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, I'm going to grab the information from the actual request body. So I'm going to say const user is equal to await the request.json. This is going to grab the data um, out of the request body uh, and it's going to turn it into a JSON object automatically. So it's going to do JSON.parse. Uh, it is a promise, so we do have to await it in this case. Um, and that makes it a bit easier to kind of read this code as opposed to the um, kind of the dot then and the callbacks. Um, now that we have this user, uh, what we're going to do is grab the ID from that user. So uh, let's say um, let's say uh, const user ID ID. I, I always get confused when I say ID. Maybe I'll do maybe I'll do it in caps like this. Um, I don't I don't really know. You can do it either way I, with lowercase or uppercase. Um, const user ID, and we want to grab uh, the uh, part of that user that is the ID. So how do we grab something? Uh, out of a JSON object uh, or, or a JavaScript object in this case, uh, we can just do user and we can index into it. And I can say, I want to grab uh, the ID property. Let's console log that out, make sure we're doing this correctly. Uh, and I'll bring up my server over here. Uh, so again, nothing's actually happening yet because we're not reading or writing the file. We're just trying to see if we can grab the information out of the request body. I'll switch to Insomnia. I'll send that off. We should get our 404 and we do. And look at that. We do get our uh, two over there, uh, which is which is quite nice. So um, there we go. What I'll do is also I'll turn this into a number. Um, but the challenge with this is that you really want to do some data validation before you just uh, kind of uh, you know, blindly uh, try to cast things from one value to another because maybe the user gives us uh, like a malformed uh, number or they, they don't put a number there by accident. We really want to test that it really is a number before you try to do these kinds of conversions. Uh, but for now, I'll just kind of go with this uh, just so that we can really confirm that this is a number and we're going to get a number here, which is quite nice. Um, so now we have that user uh, ID. What do we need to do next? We need to look through our users JSON, find the user that exists already with that ID and replace it with the new information. So we're going to go look in this case for user of ID two. We're going to look through this one, not this one. We're going to find this one and we're going to replace this uh, object with the entire user object right here. Okay. In fact, uh, let me, let me kind of just log out the user object just so that we can see that. Uh, so it's a bit more clear as to exactly what's happening. We're going to replace user ID of two with this new information right over here. So how do we do that? Well, uh, let's let's look for that information first. Um, so what we can say is let's say uh, const um, user to replace uh, is equal to. So what we're trying to do is we're going to be looping through an array of objects and we want to find the object that has the um, the, the value that we're interested in and replace it with that new value. Um, so actually, there's a few kind of ways that we could do this. I'm actually not going to do it this way. I'm actually going to just do it with a regular loop just so it's really obvious imperatively what's happening. Um, so let's say for const um, oh, I already have user here. Let's just say I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll turn this into user body um, just so that we can we can kind of uh, read this a bit better. Uh, yeah, that's a weird name, but let, let's go with that. That's fine. User body uh, const user uh, of uh, users, which we don't have yet. So let me let me grab that uh, set of users. So I'm going to say const users uh, is equal to uh, Dino dot read text file. And we're going to read the users dot JSON. Uh, and we're going to turn that or actually this is going to be a file. And we're going to say const users is equal to JSON dot parse of the file. I could probably do this in one line. Um, but uh, 
I have to await this because we need this to be a string. This is a promise, uh, but you probably can do some one line. I probably might do that in future videos uh, instead of two lines, but that's just kind of step-by-step step what's happening there. So for each uh, user of users, uh, we want to test if the user's ID is equal to uh, this user ID. So if the user.id is equal to the user ID that we're looking for, this is the one that comes from our request body, then we then we uh, then we found the user uh, now replace uh, the user. okay So uh, we we were looping through this, we found it and we're going to replace it. Um, now, the, the tricky thing here is uh, as I'm kind of going through this, I'm realizing I probably need the index. Uh, so I should probably redo this loop to actually have the index instead because I'm actually going to be uh, reaching into the array to actually change a value. So we could do this in other ways, but um, this is kind of an iterative process. So you can actually watch me work with this. So I'll say um, for let i is equal to zero for the index, i is less than users.length. Uh, and then I plus plus. Okay. Um, if the uh, users at I, uh, so if the users at that index dot ID is equal to the user ID, then we found the user. That's the main difference when we're using a index in the loop. We have to index into the array to grab that user, and then we can do the dot to get the property half of it uh, out of it. Um, so we found the user. Now what we want to do is we want to wipe out that entire uh, value with the new value. So then we can say uh, users at i. So the, the new uh, value to put in that index is going to equal to uh, the user body, which is passed to us from uh, our client. Okay. If we want to make this uh, short, we can also just break out of here. But I'll just I'll just leave that uh, without the break, just so we have less code on the screen. But one a small optimization we can do as soon as we find the user, we can kind of break out. So that means that that user is now being replaced with that new user body. And if that does happen, we can actually return with the new user information. In fact, I'll do that right here just so that we can actually see how that works because this is very similar to a break. We'll return a new response. And that response is going to be the uh, json.stringified version. Um, of the user body. Uh, and I'm going to say the status is going to be uh, a 200. And the headers is going to be uh, content type. This is a very long one application slash JSON. There we go. Okay. Um, so if we find the user, we replace it, and then we need to return uh, the response. So one mistake I made here, though, is I didn't actually save that back to the text file. So let me do that before I return a response, uh, because we read the text file, we found a user, we, uh, we replaced it in memory, but we haven't committed that back to the actual text file. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. Um, so where can we do that? We'll say um, Dino dot write text file and we're going to write to users.json this is another issue with writing and reading and writing text files is there's a, a lot of back and forth uh, with reading the file writing the file reading the file there's a lot of uh, kind of thrashing on the the disk here um, and it's a bit inefficient compared to something like a database which is a bit more precise but this is much easier to work with um, so what do we want to write to this users.json we want to do json.stringify of the users um, and I need to await this just to make sure uh, we don't actually pass over to uh, the response until that's actually complete. So what's happening here is uh, once we find the user, we replace it uh, in that user's array and we write that new user's array that's been modified in the line right above it uh, and commit that to users.json. So it has a brand new set of users in there with specifically that one user being changed. And then we return the response with that new user um, that was actually replaced uh, or modified in this case. Um, and if everything else uh, kind of comes through, it's not a um, it's it's not a uh, put request and it's not to this route, uh, then we're not going to do any of this. We're just going to return a 404 um, directly. So uh, if we never find the user, we're never going to send a uh, 200 response. So let's see what happens here. So recall that this is our user's array to start. Um, and if I go back to Insomnia here, 
and fingers crossed, I do a put request. I want to replace, uh, in this case, we want to see David being replaced uh, with a new name and a new age. Uh, so if I go back to Insomnia and I send this off, uh, we get a 200 OK. Uh, here's our ID, uh, which is the same ID as before, uh, because again, we're just replacing that user. Uh, but we do have Alex uh, for the name and age of 27. If I go back to VS Code and I look at my user's file, you can see that that information has been changed. So now we have an ID of two, and an, uh, but with, for the ID two user, we have a new information uh, replaced information, you could say, for the name and the age properties, which is pretty nice. Um, so that works pretty well. Um, so that's kind of a, a quick and dirty uh, way that you can see that we can actually do a put request to a resource route uh, in a REST API. Now, of course, we want to do things like validation. There's some cleanup we can do. Uh, but at its core, this is all that we need to do. We need to um, ask for the thing to replace, grab that thing, uh, replace that thing, put it back into the database or file, and then respond with that new value that was uh, replaced in this case or updated. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, that definitely is um, a really important one to know. Now, let's switch gears and take a look at patch requests, which is very similar to this idea of put requests with one key difference. So I'll switch over to this visual here. A patch request is probably what you're thinking uh, was kind of the uh, like the the missing part of a put request. What if we just want to update a small thing uh, inside a user, but we don't want to provide the entire value? Well, that's exactly what a patch uh, request is. For a patch request, the way to think about it is it's really just patching something up. That's kind of where the name comes from. We're not replacing the value. We are just updating it and giving kind of the fields that we want updated inside of that object but we still need a way to identify that object. So for example, we still need an ID. The only difference is from a put request, we don't need to provide all the fields that were there because we're not replacing it uh, kind of whole. We're just updating the fields that we're asking for. So the server is gonna take this object, find those fields that are, um, that are being requested to be changed, change those fields in the object, but leave the rest of the fields the same. We're not overriding the object completely. We are just overriding those specific values that are being asked to be updated from the client. So if we take the exact same example that we saw from the put request from the visual, if we have this user here with an ID, username, age, and country, imagine that we make a patch request, but we provided these three fields. We provided the ID, so I'm identifying, I wanna update that user with ID 1337. I want to change only the username and the country. Here I'm saying that there might be other fields in this user, but I just want to update the username and the country. You can leave the rest of the fields alone. So in this case, the age is going to remain what it was, which is 20. Um, just change the username and the country. So in this case, we are uh, making that request here to the server with the username, country, and ID fields, and we get back um, we get back username of monkey, uh, age of 20, which was there previously, this was not changed, uh, and country of Germany. So if you um, if you think back uh, to uh, this uh, set of uh, values here, the main difference is here we had all the fields because we were replacing it with a put request. It's a total replacement. With a patch request, we are just making a patch to those fields that are specified and everything else remains the same. The uh, the 200 request is still there. The 200 response, sorry, is still there, a successful response. Um, we still should send back technically the updated values to be uh, kind of nice to the client. Uh, we can do some optimizations there if we want for specific types of APIs. Uh, but generally, we'll send that response back and let the client know it's been updated with that information, uh, specifically uh, with the entire object. Uh, uh, so that they know that that's the entire object that has been updated. So let's take a look at a patch. Um, uh, Kind of a back and forth really quick just so we can see how that works everything here is almost the same as a put, put, put request um, but with a small key difference so here we have the uh, url for where we're actually patching to uh, and uh, this is a user 1337 with a patch request instead of a put request the body though can be different in this case we mainly need the identifier to grab the resource but then we just need uh, whatever it is that we want to be updating for example, in this case, maybe we want to update the age. 
uh, and then we can just have that age value be updated. We don't have to specify the rest of the values if we don't want to. Uh, and that's a nice thing about a patch request is it's kind of like a differential uh, between the previous value and the new value, which uh, is kind of a bit more intuitive and easier to work with for most applications than it is to actually need all of the data to be updating all at once. Okay, now let's switch back to VS Code and take a look at how this might work. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually copy my put request file and I'll just change some values. So I'll just uh, copy and paste that and I'll have my put copy there and, and, I'll, and I'll just change this to uh, patch. Okay, uh, so that's patch.ts. Now the main difference here is I'm just gonna re uh, replace all of this stuff inside here uh, and I'm just gonna get rid of that uh, just so it looks like this. Um, so instead of replacing the user given, we're going to update the user that's given. Everything else uh, from, from kind of above this and below it is going to be the same. Uh, we have our handler, we're creating the URL, we have the same route. Uh, the main difference here is we're uh, testing the, the, the actual URL against slash user slash ID. And instead of looking for a, a put request, we're going to be looking for a patch request method, uh, which is going to be updating the user. If nothing is found, we're going to be doing a 404 to send back. Okay, now, how are we gonna go about this? Well, uh, we kind of have to do the same thing. So if you think about how the put requests worked, we're gonna grab that uh, out of uh, the, the user body. In fact, I can probably copy this over. Uh, we're, we're, these steps are all gonna be the same right here, actually. We're gonna be grabbing the user um, out of the body of the request and turning it into JSON. We're gonna be grabbing that ID. Again, this is assuming ID is one of the properties. This might be different depending on what kind of app you're building. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's just a, uh, a very simple ID. And then we're going to read in that user's file, uh, parse it into JSON so that we can actually uh, go through that JSON file and update that user uh, if we need to. So I'll actually copy this over. I don't really like copying code, but just to shorten this video a little bit, since it really is the same code, I encourage you to do the same thing for now um, so that you can really see that these two methods are very, very similar to each other. We're gonna grab that. We're gonna find the ID in the body, uh, grab the JSON file, um, and then parse it into our uh, users. Now, this is really where the differences start. Um, we are going to uh, look through users find the user that has the ID that we're looking for, but instead of replace it completely, we're just going to be updating the fields uh, that are being updated. Now, luckily, JavaScript has a pretty easy way to do this, so let's see how we can actually go about this. I'll write this part out manually just so we can take it slow. I'll say uh, let i equal zero for the index, i is less than users.length, uh, and then i++. plus uh, plus. If the uh, users at that index again is equal so this is the same is equal to the user id uh, then we uh, found the user to update okay uh, if once we've found the user to update we are going to take that user and kind of uh, change the values in there um, that it uh, that, that the replacement kind of shows. So if, if for example, we just had age being changed, um, or I forget what I had in here, it was it age? Yeah, if we just had age being changed, it would just change that, but it would uh, leave everything else the same. So one way we can do this in JavaScript, this is a little bit of a cheat and a little dangerous the way I'm doing it, but uh, we'll keep it simple. I can say, uh, uh, for example, users at i uh, is equal to uh, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, spread out the body of that user, um, but I'll also spread out the, uh, the, the entire user body that's being sent to us. So the way that this works in, in JavaScript, if you haven't seen this kind of spread syntax before, I have a video on the channel in the JavaScript series as to how this works. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the old, we're, we're gonna create an object, which is what these uh, curly brackets are. This is an object literal in JavaScript. We're going to say, take the current user, take all its values and put it in the object. So this is effectively creating this right here is creating a copy of that user's um, object as it exists in the database or in our file right now. And this here is saying, take all the new values. So everything inside the body of the uh, request that's coming in, which is what we're going to be sending as an update, take all those values and anything that has a, a matching uh, key for the property name, uh, just kind of take those values and put it into the object. 
Okay, now this is a bit dangerous because if there are values in there that are not validated or that we don't want to be in there, it's going to put those in the object too, but we'll just keep it simple for now. Um, this is going to have the nice property that anything that does match, uh, for example, the name, uh, it's going to override it with the new value for name or the age is going to have the new value for age. But if we don't include one of those, the old value is going to be coming from here. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to send this uh, back to the user uh, and we're also going to set, set, uh, save it to our file. So really, this is actually the only thing that really changes, uh, which is kind of neat. And we'll flip back between put and patch in a second just so you can see how that works. Um, so I'll say uh, await uh, Dino dot. Um, uh, what is it? Write <laughs> save text file, uh, write text file. Um, and we're going to write to users.json. And in, in users.json, I'm going to say json.stringify of users. So we're going to write all that back. I did it all in one line here, just as a difference from the previous um, uh, put example, just so you can see how that works. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to return a new response uh, here. And that response is going to be json.stringify of the updated uh, user, which in this case uh, is, uh, I guess, users at at i. So notice that we've overridden it here. So one way we can just grab it out again is by uh, grabbing this value directly. We could have constructed the user first and then kind of overridden it. Uh, but I'll just kind of go with a simpler solution here for now. I'll just say that new user is already in that spot in the array. So just grab that because we already spread it out in there um, and uh, send that back to the client. Uh, but we want to send it back with a status of 200 and uh, headers of uh, type uh, content type uh, application slash JSON. All right. So um, really, that's pretty much it. Uh, now, I want you to take a look at this. I'm going to switch back between uh, this uh, put and this patch. You see, you see, you can almost like not tell that there's something happening. Uh, when I'm switching between these, that's how similar these two um, kind of um, operations are to each other. Now, in practice, there might be a lot of other differences because you'll have, like I said, validation uh, and a bunch of other stuff that might uh, make these bodies of these functions a little bit different or a little bit bigger. But at its core, that's all that really differences here. Put, um, I'll, sh I'll show you in some that this actually works in a second, uh, but in put, we are just replacing it directly with the entire object coming in from the user. Or from the client for patch, we are taking the existing user and just uh, uh, kind of changing the fields that the client is giving to us um, without uh, totally replacing the user. Okay, so let's see if this works. Um, I'll uh, come, come over to my server here and I'll, I'll stop this server and I'll do Dino, uh, Dino run dash dash watch dash dash allow dash read dash dash allow dash uh, write dash dash allow dash net of uh, patch. .ts, um, and we have the the same local hosts over there with uh, port 8000. Um, again, this is what our users looks like right now. We have ID one Martha age 60, ID two uh, name Alex age 27. Uh, so if I go back to insomnia here, let's say uh, I change this to uh, Alice, uh, and Alice can be maybe 32, for example. Um, now, uh, actually, let's let's just do one at a time here. So maybe I'll do. Um, I just want ID two. I, I don't want to change the name. I just want to change. I don't want to change the age. Sorry, I just want to change the name. So what I expect to see is target ID two. Change the name from Alex to Alice, but leave the age the same. Okay, uh, which is different from a put request because we're not providing all the values. So let's see if this actually works. Um, I'm going to uh, send that off. I hope to get a 200 back, but with the correct value for ID number two, uh, I'll send that off. I get a 404. Uh, let's see, what was the issue over here? If I open up my uh, terminal over here, uh, patch uh, users at I, uh, where, where, where is the issue? Um, I got a 404 uh, patch. Oh, I see what it is. You probably saw what it is. Uh, we are not coming in here because we didn't have our method uh, set to patch. It was set to put. Uh, so that's a, a nice reminder there. So I have to change this put to a patch because we were checking the request method, uh, which is an important thing to do. So let's try again. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'll send that off. I still get a 404. Let's see what the issue is there. Maybe I'll get an error. 
Um, no, no error over there. Um, so let's see, maybe we can quickly take a look at where this is. Otherwise I'll do a bunch of logging. Um, uh, so I, I, I Oh, okay. I think I, so. This is why I probably should have just copied and pasted um, from the previous one here. It's a silly, silly mistake, but that's part of programming right here. Um, you can see that we're checking to see if that user ID, uh, or sorry, user at i is equal to user ID. So that's where my issue is. I probably could have caught that by doing a log here and a log here. Uh, but just reading through the code, if you notice from our put request, we actually need to grab the ID is what we're comparing to the user ID. So that was another mistake I made. Uh, from, should have copied and pasted uh, users uh, at i dot id. Uh, let me let me save that file, and uh, I'll switch over to Insomnia now. Uh, fingers crossed. Really, this should work. Otherwise, I'm gonna cry a little bit. Um, if I send this over for okay, it's not a four or four. I was gonna I was gonna cry. Uh, so we get an ID of two um, and a name of Alice and an age of twenty seven. So that's pretty awesome. So um, just recall what we did here, right? This is updating ID number two with a new name, but leaving everything else the same. So if we go back to our users.json, now we can see that a uh, user of ID two's name has been changed to Alice, but the age was the same as before. So if I come back here to Insomnia, and instead of updating uh, the, the name, maybe I change ID two's age uh, to something like 99, uh, and I send that off, now what you'll see is we still get back ID2, the name which was the updated name of Alice, age of 99 uh, here. Now these are some, there's some issues with this when it comes to like the theoretical ideas of what's called item potency and things like that when it comes to patch versus put requests. That's why most uh, places use a put request uh, because it's very consistent in how it works in the behavior, uh, but patch requests are a bit more convenient, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, if we switch back to um, our VS Code and I save this, you can see that Alice's age has indeed changed to 99 in this case, which is quite nice. So um, I just really want to emphasize the, the differences here, right? If, if I if I come uh, to both of these and you, if I switch back between these, you can really see that that's the key difference. We're replacing a user or we're updating a user. Everything else for the most part remains the same minus things like validation and some other things that might be different between the two types of request methods. So to wrap up this video, I just want to kind of go through over a couple of things that do uh, that this does have in common with post requests. So um, validation, as I mentioned a couple of times already, imagine we want to make a put request to a user, update that user, but imagine that there are required fields. This is generally a thing that's um, done with databases, for example, where um, there might be several required fields. It doesn't make sense to create that resource without those fields, and it's expected to be given by the client. So for example, imagine username for this object is required and it's not there. We would just like a post request treat it the exact same way. We'd send back an error object with a 400 bad request saying uh, whatever the errors are, in this case, missing username. The same applies to um, data validation when it comes to things like uh, actual typing. So for example, in this case, you can see country is mistyped as a number by accident. Uh, we, when it's supposed to be a string, we would do the same thing. We'd send back a, uh, an error message that's helpful, that country must be a string with a 400, um, very similar to how we would do with a post request. And this also applies to patch. As you can imagine, it would be the exact same thing. Um, we would just wanna let the user know that they made a mistake and uh, they have to update their values to make sure that it makes sense so we're not putting our data in an inconsistent state. Now to wrap this up, I do wanna kinda of go over the encoding types. This is the exact same thing that we saw with the post request, which is that there are different encoding types uh, that we can use. So for example, if I switch over to Insomnia, for the body so far for this video, we've been looking at uh, JSON bodies, uh, but there are multi-part forms and form URL encoded as well. Multi-part form is definitely an important one, especially when it comes to binary data. It's also how uh, it's, it's easiest to work with forms using the form data object on like front-end web development, for example. So um, this is an important one to, to kind of use uh, and to, to get to know. Uh, it is um, definitely something that we can do for put and patch requests as well. And we can actually uh, parse that into a, a form data object in Dino on the back end, uh, just like we did with a post request. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we might kind of go through this in the exercises as well, just so that we can see how that works. Um, so uh, there you have it. That is a uh, put and patch requests. Uh, when it comes to REST APIs, uh, it's very, very similar to how a post request works. Uh, so make sure you're familiar with that. Put, uh, just to recap, is really this idea of replacing an object and patch is really this idea of updating an existing object. 
Um, now, both require that the actual object already exists. Generally speaking, we wouldn't be uh, providing, for example, an ID uh, in a post request, which is to create a brand new resource that doesn't exist. But for both a put and a patch request, we generally would want to tell the server what it is that we're targeting that we do want to update. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something. Uh, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel uh, if you did. As well, if you like the content and you want to support the channel, uh, I do have a Patreon set up, uh, YouTube memberships, and super thanks. So feel free to check those out uh, if you're able to. What we're going to do in the next video together is go over a bunch of exercises to get more practice with this idea of put and patch requests very similar to what we did with the post requests um, and uh, maybe even get a chance to look at something uh, with these encodings in there as well i can't wait to get to that video i will see you there